So centuries tribal population in Arunachal Pradesh have been consuming insects as a part of their regular diet. But in the context of climate change, shrinking land resources and a growing population, there is a pressing need to look for alternative food sources. At the Rajiv Gandhi University in Arunachal Pradesh, a group of PhD students led by Dr. Jharna Chakraborty are working towards learning more about the edible insects, documenting the traditional knowledge and scientifically validating their importance in the food system. Meena Moyong, a PhD student at the RGU, is a member of the Adi tribe. Chakraborty has documented at least 53 edible insect species, including crickets, caterpillars and termites consumed by the Adi tribe. But her latest fascination is an insect found hiding under the rocks of a riverbed. With sure-footed strides, Meenam picks her way across the multi-hued rocks that have been smoothened to perfection by the Siang River over centuries. She begins to turn them over one by one, searching for a six-legged creature that crawls amongst these rocks. Within minutes, she finds one. Dissecting the insect on the spot, she explains to her lab mates its anatomy. A pungent smell is the defining feature of the bug known as Gandipok or Tari in the local language or stink bug in English. The insect is a coveted delicacy for the Adi tribe of Arunachal Pradesh. Meena, now a PhD student at RGU, has been collecting these insects from the Siang riverbed since her childhood alongside other members of her tribe. Every winter, the number of insects swell. The members of the Adi tribe come looking for them for two reasons. The smell of the bugs attract rats, which the tribe hunts to eat, and a chutney cooked with hot spices and ginger. But every once in a while, the bug can end up causing hallucinations. It happened to Beltom Parmi, a 59-year-old resident of Aing village in Pasighat. Up here. Hallucination होने के बाद मतलब कुछ खाने का मन करता है या फिर नहीं खाने का मन करता है वो तो तू क्या करेगा काले का मोले होता है और मतलब लगता है मिसा होने से वो काले से भी मिसा होने उसका आदत थोड़ा होता है ना अच्छा काने का दिल इस साल या साल में हमको ऐसे कहना इस साल आने से काने का दिल हो गया हो गया लेकिन हमेशा ऐसा विरुद्ध में होता है मैंने मतलब गलती से एक बार ही हुआ एक बार ही सब जगह सब में नहीं होता है ये बात अच्छा तो खाने के बाद बीमार जो कैसे कैसे माता चक्कर लगते हैं फिर उड़ने का मन करते हैं यही सिर्फ यही है अच्छा कोई दवाई भी नहीं है इसमें दवाई भी नहीं है तो आप कैसे ठीक हुआ जंगली मतलब कैसे ठीक हुआ मैंने ठीक मैंने ऐसे थोड़ा सा बोमे हो तो बोमे होने से ना अच्छा हो जाता है और म There is no medicine, modern or traditional, that can help treat those who are affected. Usually, Local dispensaries keep such patients under observation, giving them a saline drip and covering them with blankets till their hallucinations pass. But it is not as if the bug affects everyone. Boil <laughs> 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 Chakraborty wants to go beyond this guesswork and folklore and get to the bottom of things. But the work for the team at RGU has not been an easy one. For Chakraborty has had to struggle with the system to publish her work and support her students.
it is my own interest to find out what is there how they are collecting those things and what are the different varieties of music they are collecting because uh, onakal is a diverse ecological region every site uh, there is a uh, 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 different uh, types of uh, uh, plants uh, are present so different so i can expect different varieties of insect so going to one place to another it is really a challenging where somewhere uh, earlier time like 2000 uh, say 3 4 5 etc there was no uh, a road uh, for the vehicle also we are to i am to walk alone in such villages but it was my query that gave me energy to uh, pursue this such a type of work and uh, asking them various question okay this was uh, a challenge for me to go alone because why alone i am saying like initially neither the local people nor the administration nor any agency they were interested to support me in such a way that what she is searching for but it was my query when i first saw that they are eating this where it is available whether they are different or not so uh, that made me to go in a place where there is a not even a cycle road a, a motorable road the uh, passing the river alone uh, it was quite difficult but ultimately i used to get tangent when i used to get yeah some people they are responding the village people they are responding in a very good way very welcoming way so that gave me okay first then after collection of the insects uh yes they uh, i found that they are to be identified this is a vast number this is the major uh, category of animal kingdom more than the plant varieties the insect varieties are there so how to identify them and if i have to prove them these are edible i have to tell to the people in a scientific way so next hassle was to identify them okay fine i pursued and pursued some i could identify could get identified up to the genus level and uh, to the species level i could not but i could by 2011 or so i could uh, record uh, 102 species of edible insect from different parts of arunachal pradesh and uh, i feel i was the first one till then no one could acknowledge me this is a uh, something good we are going to get it but i didn't bother i continue okay first identification has been done that to half way i'm uh, uh, just disclosing 101 but ultimately i i found so many are still left i cannot identify some are in larval form also so i continued uh, some which are which got identified properly it has to be analyzed when they are taking this insect as a food so the nutritional content is the first question for me so i tried to find out so many ways like a nomad i was walking here and there to search out the lab who will do for me those analysis different parts of uh, this uh, nutritional content and uh, like protein fat uh, carbohydrate uh, energy values yeah, amino acid fatty acid uh, minerals uh, vitamins etc so uh, initially i was like a nomad everywhere but i din uh, wait i pursued on whatever it is possible i tried to publish them and then uh, dvt came forward to support me and to some extent ugc also came forward and with that i could get some of the equipment so well i was very happy that i can do all the analysis done in my lab but uh, yeah initially i tried and i was succeeded but here in a place like arunachal where so much of infrastructure and uh, difficulties are there like electricity the connectivity internet connection it is too poor getting the earthing for the uh, equipment it took for me 2 to 3 years connecting netpo ncbs iit etc then i could get the 
uh, arcing problem solved, then the instrument could be installed. That is the point out here. Okay, I could uh, install the equipment, started working on it, then the COVID situation came. Mm -hmm. So, it got stuck up over there. Again, uh, I had to start a, a new way. So, the, when the engineer came, the uh, the uh, isolation transformer got burst and uh, it was uh, about to, the hydrogen cylinder was about to get burst, but my students uh, rescued with a uh, uh, fire extinguisher immediately with their presence of mind. So, this is the situation. So, I could not do, again, I am just pursuing on like uh, how to get my things analyzed mm -hmm. because so many in between I didn't stay back like uh, quietly so I was thinking but so much of enormous question can be answered from such type of uh, thing and uh, yeah these are the hassles I'm just finding mm -hmm. but let me and uh, let God me uh, God gives me the patience to go along with those difficulties because they are my strength. I do not take it as a negative way. Uh, these are the hassle. Mm -hmm. But if someone can support me, uh, support this uh, infrastructure and facility a little bit, okay, that would have taken, a, taken it on a much accelerated form. If I compare the outside world like uh, the Southeast Asian countries or the uh, now European or the American uh, place. <clears throat> because they have the infrastructure, as soon as they will get the uh, live animal, uh, live insect, they will be doing all sorts of things. But we are having in hand, immediately we get it. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that we cannot get them analyzed in time even if we have the ideas that is a hassle that is a hassle nina moyo told the print that they have been eating these insects since their childhood but she never really thought about why it was consumed till she began to study science and to understand the science behind her traditions nina chose this line of research the traditional custodians of Adi land are not so willing to let just anyone collect insects from their area. Kayon Parmi, aged 28, is among the people of the Aying village who are keeping a strict eye on the road leading up to the riverbank. The community is wary of tourists who come to the picturesque riverbank and litter it with trash. They are also protecting their tari from being overexploited by other villagers since they believe that theirs do not get people sick as often. Mostly <laughs> Kisi <laughs> The RGU team has much to decode about the stink bug, first of which is to identify whether it is a distinct species. 
For over two years now, ZSI Kolkata has been sitting on the sample of the species, unable to tell Chakraborty if she has indeed found a new species of bugs. Chakraborty has isolated the components of the tadi that local tribes say cause hallucinations and is now in talks to collaborate with NCBS in Bangalore to identify the hallucinogenic component of these bugs. Then, she wants to carry out genetic sequencing among the tribes to find out if a particular gene mutation makes certain people more prone to hallucinations. But diminishing forests, increased availability of other sources of food, influence of modern cultures is affecting the diversity, abundance and use of edible insects, leading to a decline of entomophagy among the tribal people. What do you think about the current generation in Arunachal? Uh, do you think the youngsters are really able to, you know, preserve these uh, practices, these cultures that in uh, the context of sustainability can be very important for our future? Yes. Uh, when I joined in this university, say, to 1999 to 2005 and six, I uh, saw the, uh, the I'm being surrounded with the student. So I can get many such information whether they have got this knowledge or not. I found it, it is they are knowledgeable uh, regarding their uh, traditional system. But as the time goes by say 2015 or 16, I found this is being eliminated, getting eliminated from their knowledge. So what I did was that many times when I go to the fields, I uh, uh, I give a short lecture, like in the school, especially in the school or in the first year of the college, etc., so that they can understand the value. By then, I have got the value of this insect, uh, which is being analyzed by me in our lab by my student, so they can believe them. So from since then, I think they are re getting uh, uh, aware of this and realizing that tradi their traditional knowledge system is not that less to be valued. See, sometimes back also I told you, the ethno taxonomy among them is quite strong. They're, they are not knowing this. Mm -hmm. Until and unless I discuss with the student, we, who can percolate to their parents and their family members, they, or they will not be able to know what they know exactly, which is more than the scientists, more than the taxonomists sitting in the Geological Survey of India. At that level, they are uh, pastor. Mm -hmm. So that is the thing uh, that is sustainable, of which I feel. Uh, they are percolating, we are doing, doing many insights of pumping uh, regarding that uh, edible insects. But within uh, ovulation, uh, even in a radio talk also we have events for that they do not discard such type of valuable thing for mm -hmm. uh, yeah uh thank you so much ma'am for speaking with us uh we are going to uh continue to look at uh how these uh, scientists actually collect the samples of these insects where all they have to travel and what are the kind of difficulties that they face on the field this is mona basu senior assistant editor at the print do continue to follow us on social media platforms for all the latest news updates.